today I'm going to talk about how nanotechnology can help treat heart failure. I guess a lot of you are familiar with this very, very famous British pop singer, George Michael. One of his most popular songs is Last Christmas. Ironically enough, December 25th or year 2016 became his last Christmas and also his last day. Because of what? Heart failure. Actually, it turned out to be heart failure, death rate is even higher than most of cancers. In other words, heart failure is more dangerous than most of cancers. Our heart has two important components here. The first one is heart muscle, which is elastic. Second important component here is an electrically conducting fiber network. Because of this conductive fiber network, our heart beats. In heart failure patients, this heart muscle and also electrical conductive fiber network is damaged. And as a result, heart beating is slower and also irregular and also asymmetric. Instead of fast, regular heart beating, heart beating becomes slower and also irregular and desynchronized. Because of this, heart cannot pump enough blood to the rest of the body. That's why heart failure is so dangerous. There's a couple of conventional ways of treating heart failure. Couple of devices, representative devices. First one is biventricular pacemaker. As names say, you hook up two electrodes to the heart and give electrical impulses and that will enhance cardiac functions and mitigate heart failure symptoms. But the problem is this. As the name says, there's only two electrode hookup. Only two points are stimulated. As a result, overall global synchronized pacing is impossible here. That's why by ventricular pacemaker only gives slight marginal improvement here. Second one is elastic mesh wrapped around the swollen heart, which is most of the case for the heart failure patient. And that actually protects you know, the heart muscle wall. But the problem is oftentimes it gives too much compression and can interfere with the breathing. And sometimes even worse, actually, it can generate irregular heart beating, which can be fatal sometimes, very dangerous. So here, what we try to do is, uh, by combining advantages of biventricular pacemaker and elastic mesh, we try to make some device very close to our own heart. How are we going to do that? As I mentioned earlier, two major components here. Elastic heart muscle and also electrical conductive fiber network. First, we chose rubber, which is the most representative elastic material, as you know. But rubber is a perfect insulator, right? It does not conduct any electricity. So we decide to impart electrical conductivity to rubber. How? We pick up the most conductive materials ever known, which is silver. But we cannot simply put, dump into silver powder into rubber because they're not going to mix that well. Instead, we made nanowire made of silver, silver nanowire. 
and then incorporate that into rubber. Now, rubber becomes electrically conductive. That's why we name this uh, conducting rubber. And then we made a serpentine wave-like wave -like mesh out of this uh, conducting rubber made of silver nanowire rubber composite. As you can see, they are highly elastic. Even after stretch out, still this conducting rubber is conductive. In our experiment, actually, we use the red as motor. One thing I want to let you know is that every single one of us sitting here not only have different sized heart, but also different shaped heart. So we try to customize or personalize cardiac mesh you just made. In order to do that, first, we took computer tomography image of red heart. And then using 3D printing, we reconstructed red heart, exactly the same size, the same shape. And we wrap around that uh, red heart with cardiac mesh made of silver nanowire, rubber composite. And then, first thing we did was uh, checking heartbeat. In other words, we collected uh, electrocardiogram, ECG signals. As is shown here, our cardiac mesh exhibits much better performance compared to conventional electrodes that we are using in the hospital during our health checkup especially when you look at the baseline signals, our cardiac mesh is flat, stable, but you know, the conventional electrodes is fluctuating, as you can see. In the next, I will show you probably the most important data I'm going to share with you today, which is treating heart failure using our cardiac mesh made of silver nanowire rubber composite. So the first thing you will see in the video is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, heart failure patients experience much slower and irregular and asymmetric heartbeat. You will see even it stops in the middle. And then after pacing, you will see what happens. Here you go. Before pacing, stops, stops. After turning it on, much faster and regular heart beating occurs. Because now we have a regular and faster heart beating, that means we can pump out more blood to the rest of the body. That treats heart failure. Actually, we can do something more. As I mentioned earlier, we can monitor heart beating in real time. So you know, though, when some irregular heart beating, such as ventricular fibrillation, which can be fatal, very, very dangerous. As soon as we pick up that abnormal heart beating, we can immediately give electric shock and normalize heart beating, which can save life. So this afternoon, I share with you how nanotechnology, more specifically, cardiac mesh made of silver nanowire and rubber composite can treat heart failure. I do really hope in the near future, our cardiac mesh, which I just shown you on the only red motor, eventually this cardiac mesh can be used in many hospitals to treat many suffering heart failure patients. Thank you very much.